Hey guys, so this is your weekly energetic report for the week of 1026 to November 1st. My name is Chanel, if you've never been here before, and I am the reader here with Lizzie's Charm. And today we're going to be talking about this present week. And if you're watching this on YouTube and you've never been here before, welcome to my channel. And if you have been here before, welcome back. Thank you for being here again. So, this week, I'm not going to say things are going to be light, <laughs> but it, things may begin to flow a little bit easier, um, not so dense in a sense, because tomorrow, or today when you're watching this, during the evening, um, Mercury will be retrograding back into Libra, so we won't be experiencing so much of the depth of the mercury in scorpio energy we have more it's like it's going back and we're able to kind of recalibrate our mind our perspectives on our relationships right and how kind of how it is that we show up in support of our relationships and the people who we are in relationships with right because spending scorpio on retrograde all this time and that is a lot about trust, you know, and having the courage to face your fears, you know, to be able to recognize and see what it is that haven't been seen. And I'm sure for many people, a lot of things have been being revealed because they have for me. So, and for many other people that I've been talking to. So I know just on a collective level, we're all really experiencing a lot of enlightening happenings in our life. Now, Venus is going into Libra, where it's at home. So our, with, with Mercury retrograding back and then Libra going, then Venus going into Libra, this is going to make a kind of present energy in a sense. But at the same time, Mercury is going to be in a square to Saturn and sort of Pluto. So we may be seeing where we're still blocked, still finding restrictions in our perception, how it is that we've been blocking our own self, um, kind of locking ourselves in, and also where we still have so much effort to put into, you know, Right now is really not the time to be trying to force anything, to try and make something more than what it can possibly, what it has a space to, you know, because Saturn is about time. So all things take time and it wants the effort to be put in because it wants to make sure that the details are worked out so that it can be long lasting, so the foundation can be solid and stable. You know, also so that you're in the proper space so that you can receive the growth to be able to handle the capacity of whatever it is that you are building, you know, solidifying. So with, um, with Venus going into Libra, I'm just looking at the astrology here, you know, we may be finding ourselves, we don't have to do so much work, put so much effort, we won't be so critical about um, our relationships and not really critiquing so much, not really asking for so much, or not really needing to put so much effort in, especially when it comes to our, our material things, you know, and, but also recognizing our personal self-worth, our values, and aligning to our values, you know, and just really being able to kind of jump into the flow and feel good about it it's this is also the ruler of taurus and uranus is there so this may trigger um some changes in wherever this taurus energy is for you so this can be about your health it can be about your finances it can be about where you live you know maybe you might decide to move at this time like it's so many different possibilities that can come about with this. You may start a new relationship at this time. Um, or somebody from the past might come back trying to rebuild a relationship, um, trying to rekindle the love that once was, 
you know, because with Mercury in retrograde in Libra, it's given us the opportunity to see things like really different, you know, from a much higher perspective. And it's not going to be there long because Mercury comes out of retrograde in on the 3rd of November. And then Mars comes out of retrograde on the 13th of November. So these really quick moving planets, you know, have been slowed down more so Mars than anything because it's been in Aries, but in a total, once it's done with this transit, it'll have been there for six months, you know? So that's a really long time for Mars to be in a, in a sign. But I feel like we lucked up <laughs> because it's in its home sign, you know, it's really working out its um self-expression in a sense you know so let's see so yeah that's about it as far as how like just the prominent things that really needed to be need to be um Brought attention to for this week. Uh, it may come up in in the readings. I feel like it will. Oh, how could I forget? And then Halloween is this week um, on the thirty first, which is what Saturday. Yeah, and we have a full moon that day. So this full moon is basically a culmination of something between this um, Scorpio energy and this Taurus energy. Something. Yeah, and so the moon is going to be conjunct Uranus. And you know, I'm not even going to get into that right now because I'm going to do a full moon reading and I'm going to talk about all those things there as well. So we can kind of so I can really go into detail about it, but I want to go ahead and get this weekly going and, you know, get started. So this week I did a little bit differently. I used my astrology dice and you can either pick a planet, a house or houses or, or the zodiac. So first we're going to start off with the planets and the general energy because each each dice had a card so I'm gonna get that going I'm gonna turn the camera down so you guys can see the cards and everything and we are gonna get started so I will see you in just a little bit hey plenty group <laughs> So I just recorded your entire reading and it did not record. Um, so I guess that message just doesn't want to be for y'all, doesn't want to go out for y'all. So we're just going to start again and see what comes up this next go round. So when I rolled the dice, you guys got Uranus and the full moon is going to be conjunct Uranus. So you may be, um, finding yourself having these epiphanies, these insights, these uh, spaces of enlightenment when it comes to how it is or what it is or where it is that you need to change your mind, your thought patterns and see things from a higher perspective, see yourself from a higher perspective because your awareness is in Taurus. So that's all about your self-worth and your values your personal how you value is all about valuing yourself you know and especially when it comes to uh what it is that you're trying to build here what it is you're trying to do for others um for you know your long-term goals and and how it is that you have been going about seeing things when it comes to actually making that happen so um you may have something change very like it's it's definitely a shift happening in your mind about um 
just everything really when it comes to anything in regards to living your life you know and having following your intuition because the car the general car you got is the moon so it's about making choices and decisions this is also about illusions and seeing things clearly and where it is that you have not been seeing these things clearly you know this is also about um, connecting with women your family your mother or you being a mother and the changes that need to happen um perhaps this has to do with things that you have picked up along the way this can also be speaking about any type of escapism that you may have been um engaging in that may need to shift in a way that is going to bring you better results in your life um you may also find yourself having things come up that you weren't aware of at a time and this is allowing you to see things see life see yourself a little bit clearer see who it is that you interact who it is that you show up as when you interact with others and how it is that you've been allowing others to show up to you and if that's been working in y'all's relationships because the moon is about the heart it's about love you know but this is also about your roots so it's making me feel like that there is something that is going that you're experiencing that has to do with something that has been passed down to you something of a learned nature right so we're gonna shuffle these cards again and see what it is that spirit wants you to know right now for this week of october 26th to november 1st We also have a lot to do with um, you tapping into your authenticity, you know, being true to who it is that you are, you know, on a soul level. And, you know, maybe you need to, maybe you'll be learning about mysteries, secrets that you were not aware of once before that is going to help you make the decisions make the choices and the changes that need to be made in order to support you in moving forward so let's see so your challenge card is the page of swords so maybe you're having a difficult time applying the knowledge it is that you've been learning Perhaps you were distracted by something else outside of you um, that really doesn't have anything to do with you. Kind of lost in thought. You may be also seeing yourself in a lower place than you actually are as well. And a, it's like almost a need to um, get to the truth of the matter, but it's almost, oh with this moon card it's kind of feeling like maybe you are afraid to do that <laughs> well so the soul lesson you have here is the cosmic i mean it's it's the high priestess right so what you're basically learning this week is that you must go within that the answers are within they are not without you can learn all you want to learn but if you don't take what you learn and tap in and, and utilize that and let it become wisdom for you then it's going to continue having you in this page of sword space of not being able to really um see anything clearly understand anything clearly always starting over always having ideas and not doing anything with them um out of fear 
in a sense, it's, it's like it's time for you to walk through this door because this is a two, you know? So twos are doors that you are walking into. It's time for you to end old cycles, but you're learning that. And this moon is definitely going to offer that to you because the high priestess, she is ruled by cancer, which is ruled by the moon. And the moon is like a Pisces card. So it's almost like it's a lot of um, hidden things from you that you were trying to figure out through information. But you can only do the figuring out <laughs> by going within, by tapping into you and your nature. Because only you have the answers for you. Yeah, so maybe today, Monday... Um, you took some time to go within, sit with yourself. Uh, you probably started the week off good, you know. Like, let me see what's going on here. What, what is, what is here? What, what is for me? And what do I need to know? What is it going to take for me to transform and end these old things, you know? And really allowing yourself to utilize the knowledge that you've learned and and take it within, so that you can make the changes that need to be made tuesday the three of swords but something comes up um some type of loss uh maybe you get enlightened with something about yourself on tuesday that um kind of saddens you you know because this comes out under the moon so it's almost like you are being revealed to some aspect of yourself that you were not expecting you know, and this may come through some type of communication with another person, or this may just be messages that you are receiving, um, especially through your dreams, you know, and seeing how you, in a sense, have kind of been sab how and why it is that you've been sabotaging yourself all this time. Maybe disappointed a little bit when it comes to something in regards to your family, something that you had seen as an okay thing, but all of a sudden it's not. But at the same time, you could also, there are some of you who are recovering from this loss, who are doing the healing work, you know, changing your mind, changing your mental patterns that have not been that have been deluding you, eluding you from the truth, honestly. You know, Wednesday, you got the Three of Cups. So, you know, mm, so, so perhaps this is something to celebrate. Or mm, what it feels like is that you may actually see yourself in a way that has to do with how it is that you go about interacting with others that you connect with and that it hasn't been in the best light that you would desire it to be you know and it's it, but it, it's gonna bring um goodness even still you know or perhaps you are connecting with those who you can learn something from who can give you information to help you get into this three of cups space or perhaps there's some type of collaboration that's happening um, when it comes to healing and your emotions yeah so on thursday you have the seven of wands so you're taking the time to really um overcome your obstacles, you know, standing in the truth of the matter and face it and not run away from it and really be okay with and accepting, you know, because we're in Scorpio season, so our shadows are being revealed to us. You know, the moon is about shadows as well. And I mean, just be okay with all parts of yourself. Accept yourself for who it is that you are so that you can do whatever needs to be done with it. Whatever it is that that looks like for you. What that may be for you. In Friday, you have the Seven of Cups. So, 
maybe you may be trying to escape in a sense from what it is that you actually need to do. Maybe um, that Thursday energy uh, was a lot for you in a sense that um, you just kind of need to escape. Or maybe you are finding yourself um, realizing your ideas and seeing where it is that you need to get grounded so that you can make it real. Um, kind of balancing your emotional energy so that you can actually manifest what it is that you desire. But at the same time, this energy, it feels kind of escapy to me. Like you were trying to run away from what is yours to do Saturday. Yeah. So somebody is escaping. But at the same time, there are those who are with the full moon on Saturday, you are attaining what it is that you desire after, after putting in um, the effort is like things are a little bit more clear on where it is that you're going, what it is that you want, how it is that you're going to find happiness, what your purpose is, you know, what your place is and really doing that. But when this goes along with this Uranus energy, because this is Aquarius, right? What is this? So you are kind of turning over a new leaf after taking the time to go within and really see the truth of the matter really see because something is being revealed to you come this moon it's, it's like this is a very revelatory week for you it's, you are seeing things about yourself that you have never seen before and it's allowing you to find the goodness in yourself to remember the goodness and the innocence within you so that you can have joy have peace Yes, and then Thursday, you come to the Empress. Thursday, what am I talking about? Sunday, you come to the Empress and kind of get into this knack of being able to create, tapping into your receptivity energy and being able to call in what it is, but also being in an open-hearted, being open-hearted and giving. You know, you may be connecting with your mother you know, or perhaps this is a time of fertility for you as well. If you're a woman, you may be starting your, your moon cycle this week as well. During the full moon, you may um, have a red moon cycle and just kind of need some time for yourself come Sunday. Or um, it's almost like you come to the space of recognizing your value, your worth, that... Um, you are capable, you are able, and you are worth it. Unless um, you are still trying to, if you're, you know, escaping from the reality that needs to happen, um, that needs to be, that you need to become aware of, you could still be missing the, the need to, value yourself but it doesn't feel like that that may be someone who's watching this because a change is taking place this week so let's pull in all of the cards it's a lot of healing happening for you just do your best to not get caught up in your mind. And, you know, really believe in yourself. Have belief, have faith. And it's going to come as long as you um, make the effort in doing so. You know, because nothing just appears <laughs> as much as we would like to believe it to. Even, even magic takes action. Nobody is so care for planet group. Nobody is so care for the planet group. So, no. 
with this no to me is feeling like what I was talking about earlier. Don't wait. <laughs> Don't postpone the thing. Don't get caught up in your head and think that um, your thoughts are, are correct because they are not. Um, say no to the things that continue to hold you back, that create blockages, that manifest self-sabotage within your life, within your world, that, that keep you from being able to really um, access the parts of you that need to be accessed in order to, to be, really, because this is about being. In reality, it's not really about <clears throat> having anything. This is kind of, this is a very internal spread. You know, the only outward action card you have is the Seven of Wands. And even that is still about facing your internal obstacles. Granted, it can be about the outside obstacles, the, the challenges that you may have um, come this week but it's still very it's a very personal internal kind of energy you know so it's like say no to disregarding yourself to disrespecting yourself you know and also don't say no to the healing that needs to take place for you you know because you are capable you can do it you have it in you and the ability to do so and definitely ask for help. You need it because these types of things, changes, like transformation, that's the kind of thing we can't do alone. Um, because sometimes we need someone outside of us who can see parts of ourselves that we don't see about ourselves. It's very few people who can actually facilitate their own healing journey. Yeah, so we got the sun. It's time for you to come out and share and, and, and be yourself. You know, embrace who it is that you are. Don't continue to hide um, your light. But if you have been excessively doing too much in your ego, right, that is also something to consider that you may need to take a break from and really see the truth or the reality of what this is because a lot of times when we do get in this space it's because we've been in our ego but at the same time this can also just have been a lot of insecurity of being unsure of the self and it's time for you to really come out and and be in the greatness that it is that you are share your warmth with others, your healing capacity with others, wherever that is. That could just be you connecting with people, talking to people, hanging out with people. Like it doesn't have to be this large <laughs> um, idea of what you think being supportive of someone in your life actually is, you know? So, one second. Okay, so yeah, really get into your. You know, it's time for you to get into your creativity, your self-expression, your confidence. Be very, you know, sure of where it is that you're going, what it is that you're doing, what it is that you want to do, you know. And don't, don't let any outside influences, opinions, um, or old habits you know, emotions stop you or get in the way of you being able to share this warmth with others. Also, this is about tapping into your innocence. And innocence basically means 
you know, doing things or seeing things from a place that is not um, corrupted, corrupted by um, giving yourself away the truth of who it is that you are for to make, whether it was to make something else happy or in a means of survival, you know, but also not feeling like you need to act in this way that you got to one up somebody or be sneaky, snarky, sly, or anything like that. Um, I'm really just moving from a place, from a pure place, from a, a loving place. So, And this Empress card is a this Taurus rule, Taurus and Libra, you know. So it's like this full moon is allowing you to really tap into that that energy, that energetic space of the Empress of you know being very fertile, creative, and all of those things. And then you have Saturn here. And Saturn is just basically saying, do the work. <laughs> you have to put the effort in. You have to let time do its thing. You got to take your time. You can't rush any of this. You know, just be patient and put one foot in front of the other until you get to the end. You know, and we don't ever really uh, get to the end because it's always transforming. You're working through through wounds here, working through things that hurt, have made you feel small, you know, and it's time to be big. It's time to be lovingly big, you know, courageously and confidently big. And Saturn will help you do that. Right now, Saturn is in Capricorn. So, you know, it wants us to put an effort. I think I talked about that at the beginning of the video. So I think I'm gonna leave that, leave this here. Group one chose the planets and I hope that this is helpful. And if so, please let me know in the comments and let's see, is there anything else? I think that is it. Okay, group one, you all have a wonderful week. And in group two, I will see you shortly. Hey, group two. So those of you who chose the group two, you chose houses. So let's see what house is coming out for you. So you have the ninth house. So the ninth house is all about a higher knowledge it's about spirituality and teachers and your journey your path you know it's about um your beliefs and your faith and your alignment to your person to your truth you know and being within that and having the almost having the know-how and being able to go about that but this is also maybe you might be traveling this week or making travel plans um it's also about the adventure and fun it is that you have um or haven't been having and maybe you need to have some maybe time to lighten up lighten the load and really see things from a higher perspective not take life so seriously you know it's kind of like be of you be of the world not in it you know and that that is a a very um, on point expression when it comes to the ninth house because it's about your sovereignty. You know, the choice sovereignty is about the choices it is that you choose to make to align to your truth, to who it is that you are. You have the ability and the freedom to make whatever choices it is that you want to make for your life. And then you have to 
deal with those choices however they may. They either work out or you learn whatever lessons it is that you need to learn so it can be better. You know, so let's see. So also there may be some things coming to an end as well, especially with this uh, full moon, because full moons are about release. It's about harvest as well. So perhaps you have been working towards something um, that is uh, about to come to an end, a culmination. And perhaps you're taking some time to learn something new this week as well gain a, a new teacher or maybe you are the teacher and have something to share with others yeah maybe you are the teacher <laughs> because you got the seer and the seer is about um being able to see how all things come together you know really answering the call and being able to recognize um why everything was needful in your life and allows you has allowed you to be where it is that you are today all right so maybe you'll be sharing this with other people or maybe you're learning that you have not been seeing everything from a higher perspective that you have not been seeing things um the connectedness of everything kind of missing the point and this moon is illuminating that for you and kind of offering you this aha moment because the moon is going to be conjunct Uranus this week, this Saturday. So let's continue to pull some cards and see what else this week has in store for you, pile two. Because also being able to see allows you to have the peace it is that you desire in your life. Because if then you're not worried or focused on blaming anything on anyone. It's just like, hey, that had to happen. Maybe you may also be getting into some type of occult learning astrology, tarot, connecting to your psychic awareness. Or gaining the knowledge that is going to assist you in tapping in more to your your soul self, your oneness, your collective energy but from a much higher level. Okay. And so in the challenge area, you got the seven of, seven of swords. So this can be many, many things. Um, with the soul lesson coming up, this makes me feel like that you may be the type of person to go in to learn something and then take it and use it as yours or just kind of be there for the tools. But at the same time, this could also speak about you um, deceiving yourself or perhaps deceiving others or how you have been deceiving others in the sense. Because yeah, the seven of swords is like the thief in the night. <laughs> um, he comes to take the other, uh, the other camps, things, you know, but in reality, he's only hurting himself because you know if granted there are some people who thieve who feel no remorse about it then there are those who uh do you know but a lot of this to me feels very personal especially with the ninth house coming in and having to do with 
your belief, your beliefs, your faith, um, and perhaps you were needing to have a little bit more faith in yourself. And your lesson is that you need to kind of tap more into your innocence. Maybe you need to go, you're going back this week and recognizing where you kind of lost your way <clears throat> of being able to really connect with others. Because that's what the seer card is about as well, it's about connecting, whether that is connecting the signs and symbols or connecting the, or seeing how everyone you come in contact with is also some type of extension of you or reflection of you, you know, and per perhaps this moon is showing you that these two people are sitting here having coffee. Um, maybe you've been having a hard time really having genuine relationships with people out of the fact that you are not seeing how it is that you go about <clears throat> this being deceitful in a sense or um, not necessarily being deceitful, but not being honest, not being truthful, not because you're not comfortable standing in your truth, but it's time for you to reconnect with your innocent nature. This may also have something to do with children. Or just you as a child in general. So let's continue to pull the cards and see what else is going on here. Okay. Yeah, so this is a lot about your self-value, your worth. So you got the Queen of Pentacles. This was for Monday. And so perhaps you took some time to kind of go within to see um, or maybe just really having some issues with seeing yourself worthy seeing yourself valuable but um because it kind of feels like you're trying to get somewhere and you haven't been able to get there and perhaps that's because you have not been seeing the full picture right but it's a good thing that this came up you know, granted, this also could have been, you could also be very focused on your material world and manifesting. Mm. Maybe you're a mother as well and kind of been hard on yourself about this mother thing. And perhaps it has something to do with you being detached from your own childlike nature your own sense of innocence, play, and joy, and a need to really come back and to embody this, or perhaps this has to do something with your own mother. You know, where you are fruitful, if so, you only choose to see it. Yeah, all right. So on Tuesday, you got the Five of Pentacles. So there's something, either you are having some type of financial issues or you're just feeling insecure about yourself, um, feeling left out in the cold, almost like no one is there to help you. But it's you, you have to kind of take that journey within to see what it is that's really going on. You're not seeing the full picture. Know that whatever poverty that you're experiencing, whether that is a finances, um, of valuing yourself, that is not real. It's something that you need to see within yourself that is going to allow you to come out of this state of being. Yeah, Wednesday. So you got the eight of swords. So it's like you're blinding yourself. It's come out under the seven of swords. You are kind of, in a sense, playing this victim role, seeing yourself as stuck, binded in a situation that you can't get out of. But in reality, it's all in your mind. It's all in your mind. Every, when things happen in the mind, they're linked to our emotions. 
this is some emotion that has to do with you as a child, something way back when in the past. Um, maybe you are kind of too stuck in the nostalgia of trying to um, return back to that old space of living, being. But in reality, you need to come up out of the past so you can come forward and see reality for what it truly is because you are blinding yourself. It's time to release this and move forward. Let's see Thursday. Yeah, so on Thursday, you got the Seven of Pentacles. You're at a pause. Something has stifled you. It's like you've been putting in this work and this effort and whatever it is that you're trying to build. And it's just, it may be just seeming overwhelming but you may just need a new perspective on how it is that you're it's like you need to go back to your why and see if your why is aligning with what it is that you're actually doing because if it isn't then it's going to be difficult it's going to continue to present um ways of doing things that are hard and this doesn't have to be hard you know you can take your time you can do stuff when you have the time to do stuff but if you are caught up in your mind that oh i need this right now you know we we are in a time where not much can really happen quickly and it's kind of like we don't have a choice but to be okay with that outside you know the plan not only the planetary influences but our reality in general like so many things are limited and it's not your fault you know it, that also needs to be recognized because it's like are you blaming yourself let's see what friday has so friday you choose to go within and you take the time to really see like okay well what is this what wisdom have you gained from everything that you have experienced? And like, this is going to help you tap into the seer energy. This is going to help you tap into the lessons that are going to be able to carry you forward. When you have the wisdom from your experiences, they offer you, they are like your guiding light. They offer you the discernment that you need to make the right choices so that you don't have to go about doing things the hard way. But the cycle is ending. Let's see, Saturday. Saturday is the full moon. Yeah, so at this moon, you're going to be ready to do the change, ready to change your mind, ready to do the root work, you know, ready to release these burdens, these, these mental constructs that you've kind of built up within yourself that are keeping you blocked from your flow something something is coming to an end it's being revealed to you like this is a card of enlightenment like an aha moment like oh that's what that was okay now i need to work on letting you go and then sunday you come to the ten of pentacles so you have a two tens here so your cycle is ending. It's like, first you have to get out your own way. And the thing about this, this, this moon energy is conjunct Uranus. So it's like, once you do it, this is also similar to a Uranus card. I mean, similar to Uranus energy, because when you are not, um, once you change your mind, it happens quickly. It's like you open a door and Uranus is mental energy. It rules Uranus. Um, it rules Aquarius. So this is doing this root work, doing this healing work. You know, this is allowing you to really come into your self-worth, your self-value, see yourself from a new light, a higher place, really, um, be able to tap into that energy that offers you the, the, the steps that you need to build a legacy, to build something long lasting, to have something long lasting. So 
18, 17, 22. Wow, we got the seer. Yeah, so it's the the, the, the financial issues, the self-worth issues, all of these things. Wait, 22. Oh, 24, 6. What is 6? Six might be not the hermit. Mm, six is the lovers. So, yeah, this is about coming back to a space of wholeness for you. You really need to uh, get beyond these mind. It's like a mind fuck you have going on with yourself. Um, uh, it's creating a lot of self-sabotage in the way that you want to be of service to others. And also really connect with others as well, like from this really genuine place. But you have to believe that you are worth it and you are. It's just you have to come out of this energy and this energy. And you do that through the work, through the releasing the mental patterns through no longer um, building an exaggeration of mental thought that is not real. What, what happened to you when you were younger that put you in this space of not believing in yourself? Where is your faith? It is not here. But you're getting back to it. Come the end of the week, you're getting back to it. It's, it's about to happen. It's just patience and effort, you know, in, in applying what it is that you know from a higher perspective. How is that going to help you expand your mind so that you can increase what you have, who you are, how you feel about yourself? Yeah, the higher fine. You need some this a teacher may be coming up. You may be connecting with a teacher. We're just learning some new knowledge. Maybe you also need to kind of go back to your old what structures are you holding on to that aren't working for you anymore? Like this has something to do with family. I really want you to sit with yourself and write it out, journal, get out of your head, face yourself, face your fears. Scorpio season, ain't no other way. The only out is up. Because... <laughs> We are in the realm of darkness, you know, in the underworld. And all is like your shadows are coming to light. Let them, let the light be shone on them so that you can do what it is that you need to do. What, what is it, what is yours to do? We were going through a definite transformation. How are you feeling at the beginning of this week when the week ends? It's not going to be the same. Yep, inner temple. So this week, be devoted to yourself. Do you have any type of spiritual work that you do? Do you connect with your ancestors? Do you meditate? Do you do breathing? What, how do you go within? How do you tap in? Do that. Do it every day. No days off. You know, and then at the bottom of that, don't dim the fit in. You're also afraid to show who it is that you are, but that's because you may be neglecting yourself in some sense. And the, nickel, the only reason why you're neglecting yourself it's because you're most more focused outwardly than within. But on Fridays, you go on within. And on Saturday, this, this Taurus moon is not 
You don't get to escape <laughs> yourself. Right, because even though our problems, our preconceived problems, usually seem to be on the outside, what's going on outside of us is just a reflection of what's really going on within us. Granted, sometimes it can be astrological, and we have to do put in whatever effort the, that God says we need to do in order to get our payment, but that's not this, you know? And that's okay. You gotta stop beating yourself up because, oh my gosh, like you have to give the sight. <laughs> you really do, and you're gonna see that. Yeah, all right. So you got the middle world, and the middle world is Earth. And this is another nine. All right. Let me see how many swords you have here. 18, 25, 7. What's that? I think that's a strength card. Oh, it's the chariot. Yeah, it's time to move forward. It kind of needs to activate your will and the healing that needs to happen. But the middle world, um, it speaks of, let me see. Give me one second. Right, so the middle world is about receiving help from the middle realms, right? Because just as what our our physical world is reflected of what's going on within the middle world, the earth is also a reflection of what's going on in the invisible world. So it's almost like it, it has a statement in the book and it says, do not try to correct Um do not try to correct what needs to be create, corrected on the earth without correcting what needs to be corrected in the heavens, which basically is saying as so as above, so below. You know, the middle world is created through our past endeavors, through what we've experienced in the past, but also what's going on right here in the future or in the present, not the future. So you really need to go within and take some time daily <laughs> to meditate, to, you know, connect to source, connect to your soul, connect to spirit, to your guides, whoever you pray to, God, Jesus, your ancestors, your whoever, okay, whatever works for you, just do that because that is going to help you really see why everything that is here is going on and that's this is all ninth house energy because ninth house is about the spiritual work it's the, it's the house of the guru you know it's it's the house of spiritual knowledge as well so it's time for you to kind of take that journey with well, not kind of but it's time to take that journey within this week so that you can make the changes and really believe in yourself know that it's possible like you you got it. You just have to believe so. You have to have the faith. You have to trust. You have to be willing to go down the road that you have to go down in order to make it happen. You know, it's a journey. It is definitely a journey. Big house. Yeah, so like I was saying, this is something about your roots, something about family life, something, um, some ancestral. It's also about, what is this? Oh, goodness. This is 12th house. So your 12th house is about you. It's your soul, you know? It's who you incarnated as here. Um, so maybe take a look at your birth chart, see what's going on in your 12th house, and kind of uh, get into whatever healing needs to take place. Look at whatever, find whatever ruling planet is of your 12th house and do that work because that's where that is manifesting. That's where um, 
that is happening, the, the, the things of the 12th house are coming to life. And this is the invisible realm, right? So you are really being asked to tap into your soul, to your spirit, to, you know, your oneness. It, this is collective energy. It's also speak, 12th house also speaks about prisons, how we, it's about what's hidden from us that we can only see by going within. You know, it's also about past life and karma that we continue to live out by not um, accepting. You know, this is also about loving yourself unconditionally. If you are feeling some kind of way about yourself for whatever reason, um, it's okay. <laughs> Honestly, whatever it is, you know, just nothing is wrong with you ever. You have to believe that as well. You know, see the truth that you're a whole as you are and you are, there are, are people waiting for you to show up and be your great, the greatest version of you. So, okay, pile two, group two houses. I hope that this was helpful. If so, please let me know. Um, if you would like to get a personal reading, you can send me either an email, you can DM me, or you can go on my website and check out the many readings that I have there. Um, if you need some insight or some guidance to move through this energy this week, and I hope that you all have a wonderful and exciting and insightful full moon and i will talk to you guys next time all right off to pile three hey group three so what you chose for three that means you chose the signs the zodiac <clears throat> so let's see oh, wow. pisces was on top before <clears throat> so right now Neptune is in Pisces so this may have something to do with your soul your spirituality um, this can also speak to relationships or any type of oh, so many things okay slow down so much it's coming in at one time um so this can be about the ways that um you kind of have things wrapped in a sort of an illusion um you may be coming into some type of clarity this week This may also speak about any way that you have kind of kept yourself bound and not believing, um, not just see, not seeing things clearly, right? Needing to kind of let go and release. This may also speak about your emotional stability and your emotions. Maybe you need to tap more into them so that you can actually recognize what's going on or more so come out of them. Is, and, and you may almost need some type of balance. At the same time, this might be about your dreams, your intuition, um, what it is that you want uh, to, like the ideals that you have for your life and making that happen for yourself. You know, really tapping into your genius to be able to do so, tapping into your personal magic. Right now, when I'm making this video, the moon is in Pisces. <clears throat> so, this, this, this day, yesterday, may have been very prominent for you, very, um, what's the word? Very important in setting the catalyst to whatever is changing because for this week because Pisces is also about transformation in a sense but it's also about figuring out which direction you're going in and getting clear on that coming out of the fog 
getting away from illusions or recognizing and seeing where the illusions are. Also, um, possibly any type of hidden enemies coming to light. or any type of hidden natures you have of yourself. Those may also be being revealed. Let's see what cards you got. Ace of Pentacles. Yeah, so this is about planting new seeds, something, um, bringing something to life. You know, taking some inspiration, some type of creativity and making it real. All these ideas that you've had and bringing it down and planting the seed almost. But it almost feels like you first need to clear out some things um, in order to really be able to manifest or get the manifestation going. But, you know, it's starting. This is also about you seeing yourself clearly. Seeing and recognizing your own self-worth and self-value. Because that's really where attaining what it is that we desire comes into play. It's how we feel about ourselves. Something new is definitely sprouting, but it's not coming to fruition yet. Something else needs to be let go of first. So let's get into these cards and see. So it seems like so for the blockages, the challenges that you have, um, you got the three of cups. So maybe you're having a hard time really being able to connect with people and, or maybe you're connecting with the wrong people. <clears throat> or maybe you're too focused on connecting with people. Maybe you are um, using a good time as a way to escape. Because Pisces is about escapism as well. But you're learning that you actually have to uh, put effort, put in the work, but that you can take your time with it. You don't, it doesn't have to be a rush. And perhaps you've been escaping out of this idea that, oh, I have so much work to do. When in reality, um, if you just do one thing a day, that's, that even that is enough. Because again, I think I've said this for all, all groups, we're at this time in the space right now where a lot of things can't even really happen quickly. They are happening, but as time goes, step by step, day by day, you know, one foot in front of the other. And you're seeing that, that you, you get the reward by putting in the effort. Excuse me, but also aligning to things that are worth your time. Yeah, so on Monday, um, Six of Pentacles, things are getting better. Um, having people there to help you, um, you know, more focused on the giving and receiving and not just being being a one-sided beneficial thing. Also, this card is also about recognizing your worth, right? Because it's energy exchange. When you give somebody something, they, you know, are giving you something back, whether that's in the form of money, time, whatever. However, you know, and this is also about balance. Um, maybe you are, you focus today on finding balance. Um, within yourself, within your home and work life, within your mind and your emotions, within maybe you need to be moving around more, focusing on your health, um, but this feels a lot 
like it has to do with service to others. This is also a Virgo card for me. Um, and Virgo is the opposite of Pisces. So this like of finding a balance between your idea and what needs to be done to bring it to life. Yeah, so um, maybe there is some relationship that you've been focused on that you are desiring to, maybe it's a new relationship, maybe it's an old relationship, um, maybe that's had too much of your focus in a sense, maybe that's been a distraction for you, um, because Pisces is a martyr. Sometimes uh, it goes about sacrificing itself and what it needs to do for the sake of another, for the love of another, you know? So let's see. And so maybe Tuesday, which will be today when you watch this, um, you'll be focused, you may just be focused on connecting with a soulmate kind of energy, somebody who you love, someone who you can build with, who can help you, but who also doesn't bring distraction to you, who kind of helps you balance things out. And soulmates aren't just lovers, you know, friends, colleagues, family. Wednesday, it's a transformation. So this is coming under this um, Three of Cups. So it's kind of feeling like this relationship, these, these people, um, perhaps that energy is going through some type of metamorphosis and it's doing some type of healing. Maybe some shadows are coming up for you on Wednesday um, that had to do with the people you connect with or how it is that you go about connecting with people and it's time for that to die so you can kind of come out on the other side and because maybe you were you see how these two people are hugging each other like their head is all in one another like they can't see anything else you know so perhaps maybe also you were kind of eluded in the way you've been perceiving people perceiving your connections as well or yourself in connections yeah because on thursday you come to a new sense of self-awareness page of cups underneath this king of pentacles um and how you know kind of seeing how your emotions maybe have been getting in the way of um what it is that you're trying to build what it is that you wish to have this also feels like about the give and take in your relationships as well how much like of the balance of that maybe you come from out of having relationships where the balance of the give and take is off whether it was with you or the other person um or just with other people in general, maybe you needed to set better boundaries because the King of Pentacles, he has strong boundaries. <laughs> like, no one's getting in unless he says, like, do you bring something to the table? That's the King of Pentacles, right? And if, if you don't, it's no love lost, but you gotta go. You can't be here. Um, so the Page of Pentacles is also about listening to your intuition, you know, listening to your emotions, not being caught in the chaos of the, your emotions, also not escaping through your emotions. So you're definitely coming to this new, this place of new, a new sense of self-awareness. It's going to also help you tap into your intuition more, tap into your creativity more, your ideas. Um, you may be getting some downloads on Thursday that uh, support you in your creativity, in your relationships, <clears throat> in your what it is that you are desiring to fully bring to life, but it's new. So Friday, you got the Four of Cups. So you're being offered something. Um, maybe you're not paying attention to it, or perhaps, again, this is that new that sense of self-awareness coming through again because that's what the four cups is as well 
trying to figure out what to do with that fourth cup. Like, how do I implement this? Okay, now I see this. What am I going to do with it? That might be the energy you have on Friday. A lot of water, emotion, energy here. It's an emotion about your physical reality and the people involved in it. Because a death card is a Scorpio card, and that's eighth house. It's about other people. Yeah, eight of pentacles. So this has something to do with work as well. So about self-mastery, you know, really taking the time to master your craft, what it is that you're doing, you know, kind of keeping your head down and minding your business and, you know, just sticking to the plan, taking your time, knowing that great things take time. You know, you put the love in, you receive abundance out. And that's on the moon. Um, so on Sunday, you have the five of wands. So maybe you are recognizing how you've kind of been in this space of competition. Maybe you've been in this space of ego and it's time to really <clears throat> come out of that. It's time to um, know that the only competition that you have is yourself. Also, maybe needing to step away from people who create competition and conflict in your life. At the same time, this can be you needing to go off on your own and kind of do your own thing. But it's also feeling like you just there needs to be a change in the way that you go about it um, with the work that you're doing, like the actions that you're taking. It's like you need to almost, maybe you're trying to move too fast. Like you are seeking some type of instant gratification and that's not possible. Um, we definitely live in a microwave society, but um, yeah, that's not really realistic, especially because you want something long lasting, right? And um Granted, there will be competition. People will be seeing you as competition because that's almost like human nature, a comparing of the self, but you know better, you know? And if you didn't know better, you learned better this week by recognizing that taking your time, doing the work, um, releasing the need to be in your ego, allowing success to feed your ego, knowing that that is almost creating a blockage for you in a sense this is the only one card and it's a five <clears throat> let me see something two six seven seven of pentacles seven of cups mm -hmm. You're even a little confused about your emotions and how it is that you feel 17 because you are on this path it seems like of trying to have emotional fulfillment but kind of self-sabotaging yourself um 7 15 no, 6 14 15 16 16 16 is the tower so something needs to change and it is changing come Wednesday have this death card this this transformation because you are it's something is not being seen clearly and it has to do with your emotional level your in these emotional places that you are in it's kind of distracting you from what it is that's actually needing to happen So with the cosmic lesson being the soul lesson being the king of pentacles and the coming to this five of wands, 
um, it's almost like you need to go about doing this on your own, whatever it is that you're doing. Um, also relinquish the competition, like, um, this card also speaks about avoiding conflict to stick in status quo, to stay in status quo, right? And the King of Pentacles is kind of status quo, right? So it's almost like that need to go within and transform so that you can kind of rise above all of this conflict here, right? And that's going to take whatever internal work needs to happen in order for you to gain the self-awareness that you need um, to really manifest, to really attain. What's under here? Nine of Swords. So you have some mental exaggerated concerns going on and they're coming from this emotional place, this emotional confusion. So we need to kind of break through that and see things a little bit more clearly. Okay, so you got break the chain, ancestral patterns, healing, rewriting the future. So this is definitely about some karma that you need to let go of. This death card, this Scorpio, eighth house energy, ancestors, Pisces, that's karma you came into this lifetime with. That you basically come here to kind of work out. And it's, it's about the, you know, the way you think but also the way you feel, which trigger these thoughts that don't necessarily work for you, that keep you kind of in the space of creating or attracting a lot of conflict, whether that's in your relationships, with your work relationships, with yourself. Um, but it seems to have a lot more to do with... Um, you're actually connecting to people. It's a lot of people here. So, let's see. Let me call. Yeah, you have, you've given a lot of your energy away. Very Piscean. You know, giving, being tied and hooked to many people. That martyr complex situation that Pisces energy has going on. And everybody isn't the best for you because with those cords, they feed back their negative energy. A lot of competition here. Especially with this three of cups coming up. And this um and maybe not competition, maybe just a lot of conflict. Maybe you guys do things differently. Maybe you have different love languages. And it's kind of like you need to recognize what's worth your time, what is valuable enough to for your presence to be there. Also seems to have something to do with an intimate relationship, maybe a love relationship. Maybe you are giving much more than you're receiving and it's kind of time for you to um, change that. Or maybe um, you've been receiving much more than you've been giving. Either way, 
who come into this self-awareness and trying to figure out what's, how do you need to go about applying your emotions in a different way that's going to help you master who it is that you are in relating to others without this sense of conflict always showing up. May even be some deceptive energy going on here, whether it's you or them. So it's a lot of, of everybody is needing a lot of spiritual work to be done right now. Like we in Scorpio season, you really have to do like a completion. Um, these thoughts, these mental patterns are continuing to project these frequencies that bring in these relationships for you. And it's time to end these old cycles. You need to shed that old skin. And, you know, because this is something that, this is a learned behavior. These are learned emotions. They aren't um, innate for you they are only natural because you've been doing it for so long so it's like get out of this space of um continuing to eat your tail and keeping you in these cyclical spaces that continue to produce the same results and instead do something different do the healing that needs to take place in order for the transformations in your life to truly happen for them to be real so they can stick so that you can show up and be who it is that you are, you know? We got the second house. The second house is about possession, having things, your self worth, your self value. It's really important um, for you to see yourself for who it is that you truly are. You know, love yourself. This is a house of self love as well. It's also um, the house of union partnership you know so this really feels like a i mean it can be a love relationship it can be a friendship but it feels like a love relationship um but this also speaks about manipulation so maybe you are in the space of having this emotionally manipulative this emotional manipulative energy within you in a means to try to get your way trying to get your way and not really being genuine, you know, and, but that, that is creating conflict in your relationships because it's not allowing you, it's almost like people can see this. Or maybe you're dealing with somebody who, who is doing this, but this feels like you because you're going, you're coming to a place of planting new seeds, a new way of going about having what you desire, whether that is in work, money, love, health, all of those things. And it's time to transform that, time to end this old cycle. And it's almost like you're doing this out of a lack of self-worth, doing this out of feeling like you need to do this to keep people around. When in reality, it's just gonna to continue to create relationships that either don't nobody wanna be around you or um, you're gonna keep attracting people you don't wanna be around. You know, so it's kind of like you need to figure out which one you are. Um, I'm sure you already know. <laughs> and really do the, the 
get to the depths of the healing that needs to happen in order for you to really be able to enjoy life, enjoy your relationships, enjoy being here and connecting with people and thriving in your life. You know, you have given your power away a long time ago, it feels like, and it's kind of just time for you to call it back in. Um, maybe you need some, you need to get some spiritual work done. Maybe you need to do a cord cutting something, um, some Reiki meditation. It's like you also need to go within and see what this is because it's deceptive, it's hidden from, it's, it's also of a hidden nature. So you, you're gonna have to tap in to see that you're doing this, that these behaviors that you show up in manifest in this way, and how that is doing that. Because Pisces can also be a false nature, wearing a mask, being fake. And even with this death card, too, as well as Scorpio energy. And Scorpio is very deceptive, very, um, what's the word? Uh, judgmental or um, kind of create conflict when there is no reason to, out of just having something to say in a sense, making problems where there really is none or just not being genuine wearing a false mask you know and that is between this two of cups and this page of cups and it's like maybe that's what's been going on you haven't been showing your true face and it's time for you to do that you need to be confident in yourself but it's gonna have it's gonna take for you to be able to see yourself first <laughs> wow yeah Yeah, it's definite, things are definitely shaking up for you. It might kind of throw you off in a, a little bit. Um, like, it, it might almost be unexpected. You may think that something is good, and then all of a sudden, it's like, whoa, this is not what I thought it was. How? Why not? And that's where the transformation is going to come in and take place. So, group three, I hope that this was helpful for you. I hope that you have a very good week week in a wonderful full moon if you would like to get a personal reading please dm me or send me an email um or you can go on my website <clears throat> under the readings tab and see the different readings that i have available that you can choose from and i hope that you have um a good day because you guys will be receiving this on tuesday because it's already tuesday <laughs> so i'm gonna pauses so if you're still here it took me a little while to get this video out for you guys today um the time just kind of got away from me and then my son kept waking up and um yeah i think that was it but if you anybody would like a reading um again hit me up in my dm on instagram you can email me or you can just check out the many readings that I have. And if you are feeling generous, please be open and please feel open, I should say, to leave a love offering. My cash app will be in the description below. And I hope you all have a wonderful week. I'm sending you guys all my love and so many blessings. Bye.